Okay, uh, so welcome to today's seminar. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, today's speaker, Professor Günther Last. So Günther is a really well-known specialist in stochastic processes, especially spatial stochastic processes, point processes, and random measures. He published a lot of fundamental results. Uh, he uh, got his PhD from Berlin University and then moved uh, to several other universities taking professorships and now he is University of Karlsruhe and uh, he was on editorial boards of uh, journals which are highly ranked in our area, for example, Electronic Journal of Probability, Electronic Communications and Probability, Applied Probability Journals and many others. Uh, he also published uh, several uh, books, and uh, I just would like to mention that uh, his book, uh, maybe for young PhD students, Lectures on Point uh, Processes, is really well known and uh, uh, almost classical introduction to this area. So I highly recommend it. And uh, so we are really very welcome that uh, Günther, despite of different issues, uh, able to give a talk to our seminar. Günther, you are very welcome. Thanks a lot, uh, Andre, for this uh, very kind introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back in Melbourne, in a sense, one of my favorite cities, if only virtually. Um, so since uh, more than 10 years, our university is called Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. One has to get, get uh, used to this. Yeah, my um, the topic of today's talk is... Uh, cluster density and uniqueness of the infinite cluster of the random connection model. So it's a percolation talk. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, as uh, Andre mentioned, uh, I like and I love point processes and random measures, uh, in particular the Poisson process, and the Poisson process will play a fundamental role in this talk, which is on joint work with uh, Mikhail Cebunin, who is in Karlsruhe, for some time as a poster. Okay, then uh, with further ado, let's start. Um, so uh, this the talk is a mixture on of a very general setting and uh, a slightly more specific setting. So the general setting is the following. Um, we, uh, so can you see the pointer here? Oh, no, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. So, so um, uh, we we consider um, a Poisson process eta or on some general uh, space. Let's say complete separable metric space um, uh, with some intensity measure. And uh, the intensity measure is a multiple of some fixed measure lambda. And lambda is some sigma finite interfuse measure on X. Uh, and the T. Uh, the scalar factor in front of the lambda uh, is some sort of intensity parameter, which is then later on varied. Uh, so a Poisson process, uh, please interrupt me whenever you have a question or whenever I should explain something in more detail. Uh, a Poisson process, in the first place, it's a point process. So it puts a random number of points uh, into uh, into sets or in and um, taking um, fixing a set, the, uh, the number of points is Poisson distributed, where the parameter is given by uh, the intensity measure evaluated at the set and disjoint the number of points in disjoint regions of the state space are independent. Okay, so that's the first ingredient. I will show a picture very, very soon. And the second ingredient of the random connection model is a connection function. Uh, and uh, in an abstract uh, sense, it's a simple thing. It's just a function uh, which assigns each pair of points in the state space X a number between 0 and 1, uh, which is uh, interpreted as a probability. And what, um, uh, what is the probability? Yeah, the probability phi xy uh, is the probability uh, with which I'm connecting two points X and Y of the Poisson process. So in other words, uh, given two points X and Y from the Poisson process, uh, I connect them with an edge, with probability given by phi of X, Y, and because we would like this to be, um, because we would like the resulting graph um, uh, 
non-directed, we assume that the connection function is symmetric. So as a result, we get a random graph. And I should uh, emphasize here that different connection decisions are assumed to be independent. So let's look at the picture. The black points here uh, ca uh, come from a homogeneous Poisson process uh, in the plane, okay? So that's uh, just a homogeneous Poisson process in the plane. And let's pick one of those Poisson points, this red one. Uh, and this red one connects to some other points. And uh, as far as I remember, the connection function here is given uh, by some decreasing, exponentially decreasing function of the distance. So this particular point is connecting to this point, to this point, and to this point. But you do this uh, independent connections for every point of the Poisson process. And as a result, you might see such a picture, uh, which is uh, uh, spatial random graphs. So you see here several clusters, actually the topics of my talk today. Some of the points have don't have neighbors at all. They are isolated and so on. And this is uh, uh, this random connection model uh, I should say Poisson-based random connection model is really nowadays a fundamental model uh, of uh, percolation theory and uh, also of stochastic geometry and has many applications, uh, for instance, in spatial telecommunications. We had the pleasure to host uh, last week um, um, a talk on, uh, sorry, a conference on stochastic geometry and um, related areas here nearby in Batern Alp. And there were six, seven talks and another three, four posters just dealing with the random connection. It's a very rich model. Okay, if you are interested in a formal definition of the random connection model, uh, here is one. Okay. Uh, so enumerate the points of the Poisson process eta by x1, x2, x3. Eta of x is the total number of points. And just associate with each pair x, m, x, n of the Poisson process, a random variable u, m, n, uh, which is uniformly distributed on the unit interval. And assume everything is independent. And then the pair x, m, x, n is forming an edge. Uh, whenever this uh, uniform random variable uh, is uh, at most phi of x, m, x, n, which happens with probability phi x, m, x, n. So this is a formal, uh, formal definition uh, of, the, of the random connection model. OK. So I hope you, that's one, things which, uh, one of the things which is making me nervous when giving such online talks. I know I'm not sure best. <laughs> you can still hear me, but I hope it's the case. OK, so let's, um, uh, let's um, to get acquainted with the model, let's do the following. Let's take our Poisson process eta and add some deterministic point x. For instance, we might, uh, we might be in Rd, which is an important special case, of course, and x might be the origin. OK, so then we have a new point process, uh, which is not Poisson, because we have an additional deterministic point at x. Still, we can form the random connection model, which is this gamma phi operation. Uh, what? Uh, uh, was what uh, it is doing, we first generate a random connection model based on the points of eta, then we add the point of x, and then we make all the possible independent connections from x to the Poisson points of eta. Uh, then we can talk, for instance, about the degree of this deterministic point in this graph, psi x. It's a random, it's a graph. Okay, uh, and um, it's very easy to see that the distribution, the degree distribution um, of this uh, uh, random, that the, the distribution of this degree is Poisson. Why? Yeah, X is fix, fixed. Look at the Poisson point set in, uh, in eta. Uh, so the probability that it gets connected with X is just given by this number. Uh, so what is going on here when going through the Poisson points uh, one by one, uh, then every time we get the independent uh, decision uh, whether we take this 
Poisson point uh, as a point connected to this point X or not. It's an independent thinning depending on the position. So that's uh, one of the fundamental properties of a Poisson process. Uh, you can, of course, find it in uh, my book with, uh, with Matthew, but in many other uh, sources, of course. We again get a Poisson process whose intensity measure uh, is uh, given by this measure here. So in particular, the total number of points in the sin Poisson process has a Poisson distribution with just this parameter. So this is just to give you some feeling for, for, the, uh, for, the, for the random connection model. And that's why uh, it is very reasonable to assume that this integral here, which is uh, the parameter of the degree distribution, is finite for almost every x. And that's the fundamental assumptions people are always making when dealing with the random connection model. OK. Now, the talk is on percolation. Uh, and percolation theory is dealing with the behavior of clusters, in particular with the uh, behavior of big clusters or even infinite clusters. So we need a notation for the clusters. Okay. So there are two related uh, types of clusters. Uh, the first one is to know that by Cx psi, so C is the usual symbol uh, used in percolation theory to denote clusters. So here, X is a Poisson point. Uh, and we look at the connected component of this point uh, in uh, the uh, random connection model. So let's go back to the picture. Uh, here, for instance, uh, the connected component is just the point itself, or the connected component of this point is this uh, subgraph of uh, the random connection model. Uh, and instead of talking about Components, people in percolation uh, theory prefer to talk about clusters. Okay, so that's this notation. That's the cluster uh, of a point of a Poisson point. Uh, but these Poisson points are random. So it's very convenient uh, to introduce, introduce a second type of cluster, which is denoted by C upper index X. And that's the following, just as we did with the degree distribution, uh, which we have discussed a, minutes, uh, a few minutes ago, we just add a point x to the Poisson process eta. And then uh, we form the random connection model Cx. And then it makes sense to talk about the cluster of x, which is now the point, the vertex of this uh, graph. Uh, and it's denoted by Cx. Any questions so far? You can still hear me? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, just, it's, uh, okay. Okay, so the percolation probability now in this general, very general setting uh, depends on the position X. So I fix a point X, I'm forming this cluster I've just explained, and I'm asking for the probability uh, that this cluster uh, is infinite. So this is the total number of points uh, in the cluster. And as usual in percolation theory, I use here a lower index T to indicate uh, the dependence on the underlying uh, intensity parameter. So uh, that's the standard uh, notation to, uh, in, in percolation theory. That's the uh, um, uh, percolation probability independence on this point X. Okay, uh, now uh, there is an infinite cluster in the random connection model. So if there is an infinite cluster, we say that uh, the graph percolates. There is an infinite cluster in the random connection model uh, if and only if uh, there are some points X where this percolation probability X is positive. Uh, and there are some point X in the sense the lambda measure should be positive. Uh, it's written here theorem. It we could also call it lemma. It's not a very deep aside. It follows from the Mecca equation. Okay, but now a very important and very flexible special case. And uh, I'm sure some of you have seen this special case before. Um, so what we are now doing 
uh, is to place ourselves in RD here times a mark space M. And uh, the intensity measure T is to, again the same multiple as before uh, of a product of two measures where this lambda D is just the back measure on RD and Q is some probability measure on M called mark distribution. Sometimes a Poisson process with this intensity measure is also called Mark Poisson process, which is okay because it results from an independent marking of a Poisson process on RD, which is actually stationary and has T indeed as the real intensity parameter. So that's the Poisson process now. Now let's talk about the connection function. It is assumed to be a symmetric, measurable, of course. And we have some translation invariance property. Namely, if I look at the mark point XP and at another mark point YQ and at the probability um, um, uh, for connecting these two points, I can shift uh, the spatial coordinates by X here and uh, nothing changes. This leads um, uh, to uh, stationarity. I will mention it maybe also on the next slide, or I could mention it just now. If you look now at the uh, resulting random connection model, so now, now you have uh, Poisson points in the plane coming with marks. The marks are um, also sometimes, sometimes called weights. So it's a weighted random connection model in a sense. Um, and uh, when looking at the spatial coordinate, things become stationary. So uh, when moving the points and uh, uh, keeping the marks, uh, then the distribution of this underlying Poisson process doesn't change. And this transfers to the random connection model. So the random connection model is stationary and actually agotic under shifts of the spatial coordinate. We need some uh, some integrability condition, which is slightly stronger than the one I have just discussed uh, for the general case, namely this one. And that's a very reasonable assumption because this number here can be interpreted as the mean degree of a typical vertex. And uh, it should be finite. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't make much sense to talk about a random connection model. Okay, let me uh, discuss uh, briefly the uh, percolation uh, probability uh, um, in this uh, stationary setting. So in the stationary, there's no X as, uh, as an upper index anymore. Uh, I add a point uh, at the origin together with some mark. I form this cluster. Once again, this is the cluster of the random connection model generated by the Poisson process with an additional point at the origin carrying mark P. I'm asking for the probability that cluster is infinite and I take the expectation with respect to the mark. Uh, and this is now the probability that the cluster of a typical vertex is, is, is infinite size, can be interpreted at least in this way. And it's just the percolation probability in the case of a as we call it, stationary marked random connection model. And indeed, it's not hard to prove uh, that uh, this uh, stationary marked random connection model percolates. And then indeed with probability one because of aquaticity, if and only if this number is positive. And that's why people are introducing uh, the critical intensity in this way. Uh, it's the smallest value uh, of T of the intensity parameter uh, where this probability becomes positive. Any questions? No. So if you move just to one type of marks, so it would be just reduced to the previous result? No, uh, the previous result was, uh, was very, very general. This was uh, uh, without, uh, uh, without any um, uh, structural assumptions on the model. Um, but uh, you are right uh, in the sense that this result here, uh, the proof of this result is uh, again based on the Mecca equation and it's just 
very similar uh, to prove this result. But here we don't have any structure. Uh, so um, there is uh, there is then an infinite cluster somewhere uh, with positive probability, but not yeah. with probability one. Yeah, somehow I was also puzzled with the previous result because uh, you didn't use any structure of this phi function no. in the previous result. No. S say if this function is just given zero, then uh, you, you will not get any connected components. Um, that's true, but then this is uh, zero all the time. So uh, maybe I will get back, Andre. maybe mm -hmm. I can... Yeah, so, so, so to, sorry, uh, to this did. question once I will have an example. Mm -hmm. Would that okay. be okay? Good, good, good. good. Okay. Yes, yes. So, uh, namely, here are uh, two examples. Uh, this example uh, is uh, also known uh, as Boolean uh, model. And it's the stationary Boolean model introduced in the most general way. Uh, we take uh, the mark space M to be the space of non-empty compact subsets of RD. In stochastic geometry, these sets are also called particles sometimes. It's a nice space. You can equip it with the Hausdorff matrix, for instance. Uh, and then uh, the connection function now is very, very simple and straightforward. It takes only values 0 and 1. And it's 1. And maybe I draw a picture. I should be able to do this. So I have here a point X and here a point Y. Uh, and then I have marks. So I have some K. The, the whole thing is then a K plus X. You should think of this marks uh, somehow centered around the origin and K plus X is the shifted thing. And I have here L. Usually in stochastic geometry, these sets are often assumed to be convex, but we don't need to do this here. And if these two sets, uh, sets intersect, as in this picture, uh, then we connect these two pairs, and otherwise we don't. Okay. Uh, and then if you look at the resulting graph, there is an infinite component in this resulting graph, if and only if this union set here this union set uh, has an infinite component. So from a topological point of view, the random connection model and this Boolean model um, are uh, uh, equivalent. And this is the famous Boolean model, which is perhaps the most fundamental model of continuum percolation, but it's also really a benchmark model in stochastic geometry. It's, uh, used to, it still is, it still is uh, um, uh, an object which is, uh, which is studied a lot. Uh, okay, but here's a second example, and this uh, brings me then to Andre's, uh, Andre's question, maybe. So this is, uh, the, in this example, uh, we have the following. We don't need to go into the details here, but in principle, uh, we have a so-called profile function rho, uh, which is applied uh, to a symmetric function of just the marks, P and Q, which is then called um, yeah, P and Q are really called weights then. Uh, and this is multiplied by the distance between X and Y to the power of D. So what you can see here is that the uh, uh, connection function only depends on the distance. So this uh, is resulting in some isotropic model. And also uh, the influence of the marks and the points is separated. And that's a model I will have references at the end of my talk that uh, uh, people have looked at several special cases of this model uh, for several reasons. Um, and uh, it has a lot of flexibility because you have a row function and a G function. And these functions have these properties, which I mentioned here. Now, if, for instance, there are no marks, OK? Uh, and uh, then this fun if this function here is just one, okay, uh, then uh, the connection function is then a function of the distance between X and Y. And that's the classical random connection model. 
And in this case, uh, the, the, the theta function, uh, which I have uh, introduced before, is really the classical percolation function, of course. It's the uh, probability that uh, the cluster of an extra point is, is infinite. And, um, and in this case, uh, we have uh, uh, this, uh, this percolation probability is positive if and only if there is this probability one, um, an infinite cluster. And actually, this infinite cluster is unique. This will be uh, a topic of the second half of my talk. I'm not sure I could answer Andre's question this way. Uh, yeah, but... Somehow, yes. <laughs> <Sounds Yeah. okay. laughs> so, uh, so the marked stationary, stationary marked random connection model is a special case of the general model, but it's a very rich model, really very rich. Okay. Now let's uh, uh, let's get to our results here. Uh, so again, we have uh, results for the general random connection model, uh, which do not require any assumptions on the state space, uh, and then specific results for the stationary mark random connection model. So this is here um, uh, the general case. So we have a general Poisson Griffin random connection model. Uh, and we could do the following. So let's draw a picture here. Yeah. So maybe we have uh, uh, we have an infinite component in this model. Okay. Uh, and uh, here is a point X. There are many other connections. Many points, okay. Uh, and here you uh, imagine that's uh, here that's the uh, that uh, that the x is really part of an infinite cluster. Now uh, I might remove this point x. So I remove the point x together with all its edges, yeah. Uh, what you see is in this picture uh, two infinite components. So the cluster is split in two infinite components. And uh, we call uh, the random connection model uh, deletion stable if this cannot happen. In other words, uh, whatever, you, how, how, um, whatever you try to, uh, whatever you do, or whatever, whichever point p x you pick and remove the edges resulting uh, emanating from x, it's impossible to split the infinite cluster if there is one into two. So we call this property uh, the lesion stability. So it's impossible to uh, to uh, to cut an infinite cluster into two or three or even infinitely many infinite uh, components. Okay, that's the definition. Uh, and here's a theorem. In this theorem, we assume that the infinite clusters are deletion stable. And we assume, moreover, that the model is irreducible. And irreducibility is a straightforward property of a, uh, of a random connection model, which is, however, in some cases, not so easy to check. But the definition is straightforward. It's here. So what I'm doing here, I'm adding two points, x1 and x2. Very natural. Two points, deterministic. And I'm forming the random connection model based on my underlying Poisson process on these and these additional two points. So once again, I just add two points, x1, x2, and I, uh, I do all these independent connections between x1 and the points of, uh, of eta, uh, x2 and the points of eta, and also between x1 and x2, okay? And then there is a certain probability. It's also sometimes called two-point connection function or just connection function, and uh, not connection function. Uh, it's, I forgot the term. Anyway, 
connectivity functions maybe um, I should be better prepared anyway it's the probability that x1 and x2 are connected in this random connection model uh, and if this is positive for almost every x1 x2 then we call uh, the model irreducible so there is a positive chance like in macro chain chains or macro process uh, there's a positive chain a chance to get from x1 to x2 to find the path from x1 to x2 and that's a very natural assumption because um, uh, we are interested now in uniqueness of the infinite cluster and uh, in it, the theorem is uh, telling us that if the random connection model is irreducible and if the infinite clusters are deletion stable then the random connection model can have at most one infinite cluster and uh, when it comes to uniqueness, then irreducibility is, of course, a very natural assumption because otherwise you cannot expect such a result. Okay. Now I have the idea of the proof here, but checking the time, maybe I should uh, postpone this to the discussion part if somebody is asking. Uh, and uh, uh, just mention that um, this uh, deletion stability is in fact necessary and sufficient for uniqueness of the infinite cluster if we assume irreducibility. And I mean, it's very easy to see again using Mecca equation uh, that uh, if the random connection model has a unique infinite cluster, then the, this one infinite cluster cannot be destroyed by removing a point. Oh, so it's deletion stable. So uh, deletion stability is uh, necessary and sufficient uh, for the uniqueness of the infinite cluster of a, a general irreducible random connection model. We like this result, to be honest. Okay, but now, I mean, this is uh, quite abstract, I have to admit. Uh, how does it look like for a stationary marked random connection model? And now we are very fortunate because Michael uh, uh, Chibunin and myself managed to prove that the infinite clusters of a stationary marked random connection model are indeed deletion stable without any additional assumption, just this uh, integrability assumption, which I have mentioned before. Uh, so, and then we can apply our abstract result uh, and uh, can conclude that adding irreducibility, which is not required in this result, uh, gives us uh, that there is at most one infinite cluster. And this is uh, unifying and general, generalizing several results in the literature. I will mention two or three of them at the end of the talk. And uh, this, the proof of this result uh, is really an important ingredient of our paper, which can be found on archive. And again, um, uh, I have some ideas uh, of um, proof ideas. Uh, and the proof idea is based some uh, is um, partially based on some fundamental paper um, of um, uh, of Eisenman and uh, collaborators, Kesten, and who is the third, you will see later. It's a very famous paper. It's based on the uh, on properties of the cluster density. And the cluster density is an interesting uh, uh, quantity anyway. So how it how is it defined? So the setting is now we are in the uh, uh, in this stationary mark case, due to the mark distribution. Uh, and uh, there is the notion of intensity of finite clusters. So I draw a picture again. So we have uh, finite clusters. I mean, or clusters. We have some, let's say, some observation window, W. And of course, the clusters don't look like that, but I make the picture easy. OK. So on up to boundary effects, uh, you can see here in this picture uh, three clusters, one, two, three. And there's a way uh, to uh, an easy way to count clusters uh, of a of a random graph, 
uh, this is then a, a point process, a complicated uh, point process. It's a complicated thinning in a sense of the underlying Poisson process, uh, but it comes with an intensity. And this intensity uh, is, uh, can be proved to be equal to this integral times t, where t is the intensity of the underlying stationary Poisson process. And that's why it's called intensity of finite clusters uh, or uh, number of clusters per vertex, as uh, Klimet expresses uh, this uh, quantity in his uh, famous percolation book. So, the, but the interpre interpretation of this number, which is defined in terms of the Mach distribution, and there's an inverse here of the number of points in this uh, uh, cluster at an additional point at zero carrying Mark P. Uh, this is really can be interpreted as the intensity of finite clusters. And this intensity, this function kappa, which is, a, which is a function of the underlying intensity, has very interesting properties. Namely, uh, this function uh, is, in the first place, it's continuously differentiable. That's a well-known fact uh, from as many models of percolation theory have this property. Everywhere, there's no exception here. Quite often you see uh, some analytic properties of some function with the exception of the critical intensity. That's not the case here. It's a very pleasant function. It's continuously differentiable everywhere um, on the positive numbers. Uh, and what is really amazing is it's convex. So don't ask me for a probabilistic reason of this convexity. I have an energy. Of course, we have an analytic uh, argument for this, also coming from Eisenman et al. Uh, but it's a very, very interesting property of this uh, percolation density, which is important uh, to prove that the infinite clusters of the stationary Mark random connection model are indeed deletion stable. Okay. Now. I have 10 or 15 more minutes. Andre? Uh, around maybe 10, 15 minutes, yes. Okay, so maybe I will indicate uh, the, the proof of, um, uh, of the lesion stability of the stationary marked random connection model. Uh, it's getting a bit technical now. I'm sorry for that, but uh, you know you cannot avoid this when doing percolation theory. Uh, but let's try. Let's try. Uh, so what we are doing here uh, is the, uh, is the following. Uh, I have my random connection model, and I'm adding a point at x and p. I get a new random connection model, but I remove the notation. I should explain this notation. I remove the point XP together with all uh, 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 with all edges. So the picture is the following. So I have my random connection model. And uh, here's an X. And there are maybe Words and there are other clusters. The clusters. Uh, okay, and maybe here's a connection. And then I remove this point together with all its edges. Uh, and then I get in this case uh, this one cluster containing X uh, is split into two clusters. So, and uh, that's the number n not xp. It's the number of clusters uh, resulting uh, uh, by removing the point xp. And there's a second quantity, n plus xp. It's the same definition, but except that most uh, that at most one infinite cluster is counted. So I should uh, remind you that uh, this is... Uh, uh, the number of uh, infinite uh, components. Where is the definition? Uh, it's a generic definition which applies to general random connection model. Uh, 
um, uh, I remove the point x uh, and uh, I count uh, the number of infinite clusters. If the cluster of x is finite from the very beginning, that's zero, of course, but if, if it's infinite, uh, then uh, it is uh, one, two, three, or whatever. And the definition of this n plus uh, is just counting a possible infinite cluster once. So the difference between the quantity n naught and n plus is just that I count the number of infinite clusters uh, only once when removing the point xp. I'm sorry, I mean, it's getting now technical, but it's just, you know, that now we, we uh, uh, ent uh, enter in a sense also the field of statistical physics. It's known to get to, to be technical. Okay, and if you look at this, uh, uh, at this uh, definition, then you see the difference between n naught and n plus, okay, uh, is just, uh, you know, uh, given by this uh, number in case we have, in fact, an, at least one infinite cluster. So deletion uh, stability means that these two numbers are equal, n plus and n naught, uh, for almost every xp. So how to prove that these numbers n plus and n naught are equal? And now uh, there is... Um, Uh, there is an ingenious idea, uh, idea of uh, of the Eisenman paper. Uh, what they do is uh, they take um, I skipped the first thing, which is very important, but I would like to um, to explain the, this thing here. So we take an increasing sequence of convex and compact sets in uh, this union RT. For instance, balls. Balls of radius uh, centered at the origin in this uh, radius n, okay? And then it's possible to define the finite volume counterparts of these two quantities I've just introduced, just by uh, using points in uh, Bn, but with two different boundary conditions. The first boundary condition uh, is uh, indicated by this upper index zero, which is just indicating that I remove all points in the complement of this Bn. Bsx, or maybe Bn. Uh, and there are Poisson points here, this marks, of course, and there are Poisson points here. Uh, but in the uh, uh, in the uh, this empty boundary conditions, I ignore all points in the complement of the set Bn, so I ignore these points, and I can still form the random connection model, which is just the restriction graph zero regular restriction of the full random connection model. But there are also wired boundary conditions. In discrete percolation theory, you put all the vertices here in the complement to be uh, uh, occupied. Uh, that's not possible for a Poisson process, of course, but there's a way, there's a way to define wired boundary conditions uh, also. Okay. Uh, and then there is this uh, magulis rosso type formula uh, for Poisson processes, which can be generalized to the random connection model, um, uh, saying that if I count the number of clusters in Bn, this empty boundary condition, so the star can be zero, then empty boundary condition, or this wired boundary conditions, then this expectation of this number of clusters uh, is differentiable with respect to the intensity parameter. And in the derivative, you encounter these two quantities, n, n naught, and n, n plus. Okay, good. Now, uh, the thing is, next page, I mean, the, the transparencies will, they are available. So you, if you're interested, you can check them later or just go directly to, to the archive uh, preprint. Now, whatever the boundary conditions are, empty or wired, uh, this cluster density 
uh, is the large volume li limit of this thing, which is easy to, to, to believe somehow, because this is uh, whatever the boundary conditions are, are, I'm just what I'm doing here, uh, I take the expectation of the number of clusters in the set PN. Uh, and um, uh, in the limit, I get this thing. So whatever uh, the boundary conditions are, I get this limit. Okay. Uh, then we prove that the expectation which is showing up here is a convex function. But the limit of convex functions is, of course, convex. That's elementary. Uh, so this is already proving uh, already in... It's not quite fair to say already because the, the proofs are a little bit lengthy. Uh, but um, it, uh, it is showing that indeed this function is convex if we take the limit as n goes to infinity. On the other hand, what we have seen on the other hand is uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this finite um, uh, volume approximations of this uh, cluster intensity, it, they are differentiable functions. So if you look at this carefully, you see the following picture. You have a convex and indeed differentiable function, and that's this point. And this is proved completely independently of the other proof. So we can really show that kappa of t is differentiable using also Marcoulis rosso type formula, but not with boundary conditions. We do it in a different way. Okay. So the picture is as follows. We have a convex differentiable function. And uh, the convex differentiable function uh, is the limit uh, of differentiable uh, uh, of different, uh, differentiable functions. And there's a result, look up textbooks on analysis, and you see, okay, in this case, the derivative of this convex differential function is the limit of the derivatives of the approximating function. Okay. Uh, and now coming to the, uh, uh, to the conclusion, uh, this limit uh, is... Uh, independent of the boundary conditions somehow. Uh, and, uh, and that's why uh, it's, uh, it, it follows uh, that this quantity actually is indeed zero. So it's really, I would never have thought of such a proof. It's really some ingenious idea from this paper by Eisenman et al. Uh, but there's a lot of work to do uh, to make it working in continuum. Okay, but let's uh, finish the talk with examples. Uh, so here is the classical, classical unmarked stationary random connection model. What is the classical unmarked stationary random connection model? It's the following. You have no marks, a stationary Poisson process uh, on, the, on RD, and the connection function phi is just an isotropic function. So it's a function of, uh, of the distance of the norm of x, of the distance of x bit, uh, from, from the origin. Uh, and the function is even assumed to be decreasing. OK. Uh, and uh, it's not hard to prove. You know, it's some analysis. Uh, it's not difficult to prove uh, that we have irreducibility here, uh, even without this assumption. We don't need anything on, to assume on this phi function. Uh, so this uh, classical um, model is, of course, irreducible. Um, and uh, so we get this classical result that the stationary, that the infinite cluster of a classical stationary random connection model uh, is unique. But we have already in this simple, but not perhaps not so simple example, uh, we have uh, generalized the result. And now again, getting back to Andreas' point, there's an intensity here, uh, T. And it was Matthew Penrose who proved maybe 20 years ago or something that uh, even without this isot isotropy function, the critical T, the critical TC, you remember the definition. So the smallest value where you have, where you observe calculation is positive and finite. Okay, Boolean model. Uh, making some uh, mild assumption on the grains, for instance, uh, to contain almost surely an open neighborhood of the origin, which is too strong, by the way, but it's sufficient to uh, guarantee irreducibility. Okay, fine, we have irreducibility, so there can uh, be at most one infinite cluster. Uh, 
is also a special case of our general result. Or the weighted random connection model, which we have seen before. Uh, it's also not hard. It's actually easy to see that its model is reducible. Uh, hence, it, it has at most one infinite cluster. So to conclude the talk, uh, let me, there's no summary here. There are references. Uh, but let me say uh, that uh, we have, on the one hand, a general uh, result, abstract result, uh, telling us that for an irreducible uh, random connection model, uniqueness of the infinite cluster uh, is uh, equivalent to the lesion stability. But we have also a uh, quite a number of results for the stationary marked random connection model. Uh, some of them are of interest, we think, in their own right, namely uh, properties of the cluster density. Uh, and we have combined this with, uh, with our abstract result uh, and uh, uh, showing that uh, uniqueness of the infinite cluster is, uh, is a standard uh, property of random connection models uh, once they are irreducible. So here are some references. Uh, that's this wonderful uh, paper by Eisenman, Kesten, and Newman. Uh, then uh, Burton and Keane. This is a very popular approach to uniqueness of infinite cluster. And actually, uh, the majority, almost all proofs now of uniqueness are based on this Burton-Keane approach, which is very, very different from this approach. Uh, but... Uh, we think that um, for the Poisson driven random connection model, uh, this approach uh, is very, very useful and it comes with a lot of additional properties. That's our uh, preprint. Then uh, maybe I should mention, should mention, yeah, if you are interested in a Poisson process, okay, look up this book. Uh, and um, Mester and Roy. Mester and Roy uh, is a standard uh, reference for continuum percolation. You can find both the Boolean model and the classical random connection model. Uh, this is this, uh, oh, sorry to mess you. Uh, it's, it's incredible. It's more than 30 years ago. <laughs> Actually, it was Matthew who has introduced the, uh, the random connection model in a, in a, in a rigorous way. Um, Okay, yeah, thanks a lot for your uh, uh, attention and I'm ready to answer questions. Okay, thank you very much, Gunther, for just flowing, explaining all the details. Uh, just unmute yourself and ask questions if any. Oh, hi, Gunther. Ah, now I have the pictures. Iowa, such a pleasure to see you. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Uh, uh, good to see you too. Uh, yes, uh, I did not disturb you when you were talking about this uh, first example where you used M. Uh, was the M dependent on X or was the M a fixed M for all different points in your first example? Which? Number yeah, you use the union what, what, of the number the m of plus x. So the first example go back all the way, quite far away, because uh, um, I thought you were enjoying and uh, disturbing your uh, fantastic flow of logic was not really a great idea. So going back, back to the, you have the union of uh, m plus x, that example. It's the first example after Andre uh, uh, interrupted your talk. Sorry for that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, here, 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 here. So this... Uh, um, it's, there's no n here. Oh, sorry. Okay. Is this k dependent on x or not? The phi. You have this I mean, uh, X. Oh, ah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's oh, oh. excellent. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's that, that's okay. I'm, I have to yeah. correct this uh, thing. The basic message is still okay, uh, but uh, ah. you know, uh, let's interpret this as a marked random connection model. Then everything is fine. Okay. 
No, everything is fine. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, X are the points of the Poisson process and K are the marks. Uh, but mm -hmm. you can also interpret interpret as an abstract random connection model where you just have. Um, uh, but it's okay. I mean, it's an example in the frame. Oh, it's okay. No, it's okay. We 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 uh, we interpret uh, uh, we introduce the, the Boolean model in the standard mm -hmm. way. That's quite popular to use points and marks yeah. decorating. And then I'm, you know, I'm shifting this individual uh, points X by this mark. So I center the marks around the points X. And then I take the union. For instance, if uh, if um, um, if the mark distribution is just a distribution on balls centered at the origin, mm -hmm. then everything is determined by the radius distribution. And what you in fact get is the union of balls centered at the Poisson points with random radii. It's called spherical Boolean model. Oh, thank you. Is this answering your question? I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gunther, I have a question. Uh, ju just trying to develop intuition around your result. Uh, say if M finite or countable set, so I think uh, just result is just following, you, you take just one mark with uh, positive probability and it follows. So it seems that it's like the most interesting case where a probability of each mark is zero. So it's like count, uh, continuous set of marks. Can you comment on that? Okay, so first of all, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would say once you, <clears throat> once you accept uh, this classic result, uh, on the uniqueness of the infinite cluster uh, for an unmarked yeah, classical uh, uh, random connection model, uh, which has to be proved, of course. You know, it's uh, it's uh, not trivial. I think people proved it with the Burton Keen approach. Okay. Uh, once you accept this, I'm tending to follow you, Andre, <laughs> uh, because if you have a countable number of points. You have to make sure that every point can get connected to uh, to, to any other point. Uh, so, for instance, if you have just two marks, blue and red, and uh, your connection function is only allowing connections between blue and red points, but no connections between blue and red, then uh, if the intensity of blue points is high enough and the intensity of red points is high enough, uh, then you have uh, two infinite clusters, uh, uh, which are uh, in fact, even independent. Okay, so and this is uh, showing uh, that somehow, uh, if the mark space is uh, is countable, uh, then uh, somehow it's easy to believe <laughs> that maybe this uh, proof where we have just one mark uh, can be generalized, and that's true, by the way. Also, in this case, the Burton Keen approach should work also without problems. I would say. Um, it's. I would. I'm. I'm tending to agree that the uh, uh, the interesting uh, uh, part of this um, of this result, the more interesting part, is the uh, is the continuum state space, and things are then getting more tricky, it, to, like in Markov processes. You know, it's not so easy to define irreducibility of a Markov process on a general state space, uh, and so on. And but this case is important. Continuum mark space is important. The Boolean model, for instance, is just radii are continuum, weighted, uh, random weighted connection models, they are in continuum. And in that case, yeah, also it's not so easy to to uh, to to use Burton Keen approach, I would say. Okay, if it works at all. Okay, uh, any other questions, please, or comments? Uh, it looks like that uh, if there are no other questions or comments, so let us uh, thank Gunther again uh, for very nice talk, very nice slides, and uh, just uh, taking uh, his time so early in Germany. 
So thank you very much and hopefully uh, 